begin a new business, many hurdles must be crossed. The market and your competitors need to be investigated and the roadmap must be drawn, illustrating the lines that the new venture must navigate. Also, internally, the new bio-business partners must be aligned. Furthermore, the goal has to be defined and the time frame should be clear. For new businesses, the role of the partners is not always clear. New businesses need entrepreneurial skills, vision and endurance to find the proper place in the market. This section of the MOOC focuses on competition issues for three different bio-based products – medical devices, biopaints and biofuels. To begin a new business, you must understand the market as well as possible. Various economic models have been made for this purpose. We will follow the Five Forces model, developed by Harvard Professor Porter in 1979. He described five key factors. These five factors should be understood and put into proper perspective. And we will focus on the following three issues, substitution, entry barriers and rivalry. First, we will discuss substitution. Many bio-based products are substitutes, meaning that they replace an existing product, thereby competing with existing markets. In the case of biofuels, it's very clear that the service this fuel provides is identical to mineral fuel. Whether a car uses diesel or biodiesel, the performance is the same. If the substitute has no unique features, the buyer will not be very enthusiastic unless the new product is cheaper. The essence for success is therefore to create and expose the distinguishing benefits of your product and competitive pricing. Second, Porter refers to the following five entry barriers. 1. Economy of scale largely helps the existing industry, whether that be Exxon, Ikea, Google or Volkswagen. The existing full-grown industry benefits from its production scale and its marketing and service channels. Existing industry is often denoted as incumbent companies that have shaped the market largely to their benefit. Consequently, market fundamentals are best understood from the incumbent's point of view. 2. Brand identity is a major asset for incumbents and is a great barrier to new innovative products. Creating a brand feeling is a special topic and needs advertising and marketing specialists. 3. In addition to scale benefits, existing firms have large networks of distribution channels for both the supply side and for sales. These channels have been installed in the past and are there to stay. 4. Regarding requiring capital, Major industries do not need the investments that newcomers do. They have production capacity and utilities that have already been largely depreciated. Furthermore, they have a solid position from which to convince banks and other investors. The risk of losing their money is the most important factor for any investor and investing in existing companies lowers that risk since their viability has been proven already and they have a solid cash flow to show. Five, finally, Larger organizations are better prepared for governmental policy changes since they can afford to put labor into lobbying or other political activities. And within this context, the entering company can be regarded as a disruptor that has to, be f has to find its way by itself. By nature, the disruptor is weak and vulnerable at the beginning. The third element of the Porter model that we discussed concerns rivalry. Rivalry in most markets is enormous. Especially when substituting with new bioproducts, it is unlikely that existing companies will be willing to give up their market share. Only on rare occasions, such as with the computer in the 1970s, is the product so new that no market previously, previously existed. For a startup such as Apple, there was hardly any rivalry and thus they could grow very quickly indeed. For existing vast markets, such as gasoline or diesel, it is very different. Companies such as Shell, Exxon or BP were not happy when biofuels entered the market in the mid-1990s in the EU and the US, in Brazil since the 1970s. Only when governments set mandatory blending targets for biofuels did these large companies, as required by law, buy biocomponents from smaller companies. It is rarely seen that incumbents begin their own biofuel factory. Now, some 25 years later, the market is settled and bioblending is being applied at 5 to 10% in the EU. 
most existing oil firms adapted to this new situation, while some smaller biofuels factories failed and others were bought by the larger companies. Only recently have some major oil firms, such as Neste and Total, begun their own production line. From a rivalry perspective, it makes sense for the larger companies to sit back and see how things develop and then later adapt to new trends. For innovators, this course of events is often frustrating. In addition to external issues, the way an organization is set up is also a key success factor. As an introduction, we will briefly focus on the McKinsey 7S model from the 1980s. Based on organizational expertise, seven issues were defined, ranging from strategy and style to skills and the structure of the internal organization. The most important partner should have their strategy clearly defined. If this, no, if this is not the case, the startup will be hampered and may fail in an early stage. Strategy can only be developed if the fundamentals of the targeted industry are clear. Essentially what is needed is a common vision for the future, the economic trend and the role each of the partners will play in the years to come. Although not easy, a profound analysis is needed. Making money as the sole strategy is often not enough. If you compare innovation to soccer, it is clear that within the game all the rules are set and the team should work smoothly. For partners in a new business venture in an unknown market, the business goal is often less clear. Another important topic related to bio-based business development is the supply chain. For all three examples we will discuss, supply chain issues are key to the success of the venture. As an illustration, the supply chains of a biopaint and a mineral paint are compared. On the left are the steps needed to produce a linseed oil, on the right are the steps needed in traditional paint production. The extra steps for the bio-based product are primarily associated with land-related activities, such as planting, nursing, harvesting and crop storage. The bio-based supply chain is usually significantly longer and costlier than the traditional chain. This tension in the bio-based supply chain partly relates to the previously mentioned economy of scale and access to distribution importers model. In addition, complex supply chains do not help new products easily enter the market. Care should be taken that new bio-based supply chains are smoothly organized and well set up before beginning the operation. As a result of the longer supply chain and often smaller production scale, the costs for bioproducts can be higher compared with the standard products. For the capital cost, capital expenditure or CAPEX, more processing steps mean more unit operations and thus larger investments are needed. This extra investment may involve more risks for investors. Furthermore, as said, the incumbent competitors already have their installed base depreciated. Longer supply chains and other bio-based issues often increase operational costs, operational expenditures or OPEX, such as labor, transport and utilities. Moreover, the margins per step in a longer supply chain and the risk of misfits increase. These setbacks in terms of risk and costs must be countered by the benefits from the new bio-based products. For bio-based medical devices, higher costs and clearly countered are clearly counted by their health benefits for the patient. This is true also for workers using bio-based coatings instead of solvent-based products. If the benefits are very clear and apparent to the buyers, competition with incumbents can be faced successfully, as illustrated by these examples. For biofuels, however, the benefits for the consumer are not directly visible since climate change and CO2 emissions are a long-term and global issue. Without strong governmental support, biofuels would not survive. Now let us put the theory into practice. The first example concerns biopolymer orthomedical devices. Orthomedical devices are designed to be implanted into the human body as replacements for bone, cartilage or ligaments. The first metallic materials were successfully used in the 20th century. Biodegradable polymers made from polyglycolide and polylactide were extensively used as gen second generation products. And today, the third generation biomaterials are being developed, which are expected to stimulate specific cellular responses. The latest materials have demonstrated the ability to signal and stimulate specific cellular activity. Due to the fundamentals of this medical market, 
the substitution of metal parts by biopolymers parts has proven to be a success. Market players such as Corbion and DSM are making biopolymer materials for these applications. The use of bio-based raw materials in resins and coatings is a growing area. Many of these bioproducts have an equivalent performance to their mineral counterparts but have no organic vapors VOC, low chemical odor levels and other positive features. These advantages are recognized and stimulated by government to reduce workplace related diseases such as CSE, a solvent induced chronic disease often developed in paint workers. By 2004 an EU ban was put into action against using solvent based paints indoors. Other advantages are as follows. Safety. Fire and explosion hazards are minimized. Sustainability. Use of mineral-based products is reduced and in favor of the use of fully renewable materials. Independence and security of supply. EU dependence on oil imports is reduced. This holds even more for the energy sector. Rural development. Local jobs are created and agricultural activities are diversified. Manufacturers of bio-based raw materials and resins include Olion, Roquette, Cargill and others. A biofuel is a fuel produced from crops, organic waste or industrial bio-waste. Short-cycled biofuels produce CO2 that is only 1 to 50 years old. The burning of these biofuels releases the CO2 that was captured earlier during its growth. Compared with CO2 from mineral fuels, millions of years old, biofuels are regarded as renewable. Bioethanol is an alcohol made by fermentation mostly using sugars from beets or sugar cane. Bioethanol is used in the US and in Brazil. Biodiesel can be used as a fuel for diesel engines mostly as a blend with mineral diesel. Biofuels have been promoted by governments worldwide resulting in mandatory blending mostly for road transport. There are various social and environmental issues related to biofuel production that have been debated in the media and scientific journals. Therefore, the EU focus for 2030 is on second generation biofuels made from bio waste. Examples of biofuels producers are Diester, Neste and Alco. From a competition perspective, biofuels face higher costs compared with mineral fuel. These costs are mainly due to costly raw materials, their long supply chain and smaller production scales. In addition, the production costs, important for competition issues, are only a portion of the total price. These higher production costs are not the only cost price issue. The company's margin, the excise duty and the VAT complete the fuel pricing. In this example, the production costs for biofuels are assumed to be higher, while the other cost elements are percentages that are equal for biofuel and mineral fuel. As a result, the final price for biofuels is higher. Without mandates or subsidies from governments, biofuels cannot compete with standard fuels. Using the Porter and McKinsey models and the three examples, it is clear that bio-based businesses and their market competition should be carefully addressed. Without fully grasping the fundamentals of the targeted market, there is little chance of survival for a startup. However, if the developers can see the bioproducts potential, understand its supply chain production costs, understand possible reactions from incumbent producers and create a strong market entry demonstrating the benefits for the end user, it is worth the effort to beat incumbents and other competitors. Ultimately, our economy will benefit from these new bio businesses. They will promote a more sustainable future and create new jobs.